couple of days ago, I was asked a question on my channel from a guy named Mike Narone. This is on a Star Citizen video I made in which I you know, did a preview of the uh, 2.0 footage they showed at CitizenCon a few weeks ago and talked about my concerns about the game. It was a very good question. First, I want to talk about where it fits into context of the gaming industry these days. We have kind of three phenomenons that didn't really exist when I was a kid or even five or six years ago, and that is pre-ordering, pledging, and early access. Now, I know what you're going to say. Pre-ordering has been around for a while, but you have to understand that it's kind of taken a whole new shape and meaning as time has gone on. See, originally, when you pre-ordered a game, it was because physical copies were all we had. You know, prior to Steam and other distribution services, you know, you went to GameStop or Walmart or whatever and you bought the copy. If they were out of copies, you were just shit out of luck unless you had somewhere to go. And I grew up in a fairly small town. I mean, you could drive a couple towns over if you wanted to, but generally speaking, if you wanted to copy the game, you went and reserved a copy. That way you could be sure that you could pick it up. Nowadays, with digital dist distribution available on PC and consoles, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the publishers really like that influx of income. It's great to say, hey look, we made this game, we haven't even put it out yet, and we're already making money off of it. Um, hopefully it's not some sort of scam where they really need the money to complete um, development of the game, though that does seem to be the case sometimes, but we have these three phenomenon and we, we kind of react to them in different ways. I think of all three of those, pre-ordering is seen as the the biggest evil, um, you know, I think pretty much the entire entirety of the PC Master Race group is pretty much in a united front against it. And I think for the most part, it's a bad idea. I think the last couple of games that I can remember pre-ordering in the last three or four years were GTA V and what was the other one? Um, well, shit, I can't think of it. Um, Oh, Fallout 4. I've, I hadn't come out yet, that's why I was blanking. Fallout 4 and GTA 5 were the last two big releases that I can remember. And both of those, actually, I got a discount on them. So, uh, And I think it can be kind of a, a cancerous uh, habit to get into um, rewarding developers for things they haven't even done, which is kind of interesting because I think we view the other two things in a much different light. Uh, early access is often seen as a bad thing, but I actually think of the three, it's the most healthy. You know, because you're actually getting to play the game. You're actually getting to test the game. And on Steam, at least, if you don't like it, you can get a refund. I mean, they have a very generous re refund policy. And so you're not actually cheating yourself out of anything. You know, you're not really rewarding them for doing bad work. You, you are paying to try the game, a paid demo almost, with the knowledge and the exception that, oh, this is not a finished product, and that's on you. Um, and then we have pledging. I think pledging is often seen as the most honorable of the three, not because it's really any functionally from a end user standpoint it's not any functionally different than pre-ordering I mean, you're still paying for something that doesn't as far as you're concerned exist yet now i know with you know star citizen in particular yeah we can see videos they're working on the code but the, the persistent universe the the thing that makes star citizen what it is doesn't exist to us yet i mean it, it exists in some form or another behind closed doors but to us it doesn't exist but it's a more honorable contribution of money I think at least people seem to view it that way because you are voting with your money so to speak you know you are looking at a project looking at a developer and saying you know this has value I want to support this I want to be a part of this they're trying to do something different they're trying to do it without publishers and without conventional means of publishing a game and so here's my money and I don't have a problem with that um, and I think uh, SIG has a pretty good refund policy from what I've seen. I haven't put any money down. And that's kind of the point of what I wanted to bring up here. And the question that I was asked was, and I'll paraphrase a little bit here, but he asked me, you know, you, you've done this preview of this game and you have lots of great ideas. I think that your cautious optimism is a good thing. I think that, you know, you have a healthy skepticism when it comes to what they're saying versus what they can deliver. And I think that's a good, fresh perspective to bring here. But what he wanted to know was, what exactly would they have to do to convince you, uh, short of releasing, or, or would they have to actually release the game to, to you know, present, uh, to <laughs> convince me to support the product? Um, for me, personally, when it comes to Star Citizen, and I don't back things very often. I think this is only the second thing I've ever backed. And I have no problem with Kickstarter or, or crowdfunded things in general. But... Um, I usually like to have something to play immediately, uh, which is a big reason why I haven't. I mean, you could do a, a Arena Commander, but the ship that I am interested in doesn't even exist in that yet, so that's I wouldn't even get that. But for me, 
when they come out with the 2.0 Alpha, the Crusader, uh, when you can see a scaled down version of the Persistent Universe, you can see all these systems in play, and it's optimized and stable. If they can do those three things, they'll have convinced me. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, and I, I hold nothing against them for, for taking this viewpoint, a lot of people are still not going to be convinced until the game is actually out whether that's late 2016, late 2017, hopefully sometime before I die. Uh, whenever that is, I know a lot of people won't be convinced until then, and I don't blame them for that. It, that's a completely healthy perspective. Um, for me, when they can put these systems in a framework that demonstrates to me, okay, we know what we're doing enough to demonstrate this, at that point, from my opinion, it's, it's just a matter of time for them to take it from there to the rest of the universe. And I honestly, I don't know how long that's going to be. But I think a lot of people will be won over by the 2.0 release, whenever that happens. I, I may even be a little more generous than that, and once they've announced a firm date, I may go ahead and pledge. So, to pledge or not to pledge, um, I'm not, I don't want to say that is the question. <laughs> I hate, nope, I'm not going to do it. Um, to pledge or not to pledge, I think that's up to you. You know, what do you feel personally about this project or any project in general? What do you feel about it? Um, understand that most Kickstarter, I think I saw a statistic, something like 80%, maybe maybe higher than that, don't come to fruition. And that's just the nature of how that works. Uh, it's not that uh, most of these people have bad intentions. I think, generally speaking, they have good intentions. They want to do what they say, but then they actually get the funding. They say, okay, you've got all these people believing in you. Go forth and do what you said that you could do. And it's not that they lose interest in it so much. I mean, some of them may, but I think more it's they actually see what it's going to take, all the work it's going to take. And, like, for instance, there's a, a game on Steam right now. Let's see. Um, Kenshi. It's in early access right now. Fascinating game. Fascinating concept. I don't know that it'll ever be complete. It's such a bold undertaking, and for the longest time, it was like one guy working on this. I think he has a small team now. Um, but there's a reason why the game market works like it does. I'm not saying it's perfect, but you know, Activision Blizzard and EA and uh, etc. All that uh, Ubisoft. Oh shit! Uh, all of those have a system down. They're efficient. They may not be innovative. They may not give you as much as they could if they really tried but and I'm going to talk more about that as my channel goes on but they are efficient you know they they know how to finish projects they know how to manage it um, if they didn't we wouldn't know who they were uh, so to pledge or not to pledge I think it's up to you you know if you have faith in a publisher or if you decide okay I've got 50 bucks 100 bucks whatever it is and I think the healthiest decision is if I have 50, 50 100 bucks that I don't care about I do care about this project, but I don't care about this money. I don't care if I ever get it back. Then go ahead and pledge. Beneath that, it's up to you. But for Star Citizen for me, like I said, 2.0 Alpha, that'll be the turning point for me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. This is absolutely an important topic in modern day gaming. This is one of the hottest topics that comes up each time a game comes out. We have so many pre-order debacles like the the latest deuce ex just a couple of weeks ago I mean, it was just terrible and there's been lots of things uh in that same vein of stupidity before so let me know what you think in the comments below i'd love to get some dialogue going on this thanks guys